My name is Dave Moss. I spend approximately 200 days a year at racetracks all over the country, helping professional and amateur road racers and track day riders with suspension tuning on their motorcycles. I tune approximately 3,500 bikes per year. This is Two Clicks Out. Basic setup, okay. This is my first time here. It is? Actually, third time at the track. Yeah, first time with you. On this bike? First time, like, you know, giving this bike to you. <laughs> Got it. So I'm a B-minus rider, so I'm just starting off. Okay, so you have a 209 front and a 208 rear. Yeah, 208 GP area. Yeah. So you have different roll characteristics on the tires. So it'll steer pretty quick with that front tire. We, that should work, that should work. It's an 06? This is 06. Okay, um, bone stock, yes. suspension? Yes. Forks or shock ever been serviced? Never. How many miles on the bike, roughly? 52. 5,200? Okay. Oh, that's fine. It just has to be approximate. Why? Do you set your tire pressure already? No, this one uh, wasn't set yet. This one was set at 30. That's Okay, this one's nice and warm right now, so we probably should set this at 32. There's a lot of heat in the carcass itself from the sun. So we'll have to re set the cold pressure obviously higher because it's already warm. Chain is good. All right, you're on notch number four on the preload adjuster. Okay. I'm 220 in gear. I re and when I raced the bike with the stock shop, it was on notch number three. Okay. So you like a lot of punishment? Because <laughs> that is ridiculously stiff. I don't even need to measure sag. It'll probably be about 10 mil. Okay. So your bike has just been bouncing off bumps, literally not absorbing them. Okay. So we need to fix that right away. Have you crashed the bike? Once. Where? Here, at turn 14 last month. Okay. Uh, you lost the front, right? Uh, I couldn't tell. <laughs> when you crashed, did you fall on the bike? Yes, I think. The rear spun away from you. Do you understand now why that happened? The shock won't work. You pick up the gas just a little bit. Tire spins and goes. You fall on your side and on your shoulder. Man, there you go. All because the back of the bike was rigid. Should have put a screaming eagle on the tank. Jump on. Well, that's all gone. We'll be a lot better with that. So full tuck, feet on the pegs, so you're going down the front straight, flat out. Okay, perfect. Now stay there. Okay, off you get. The front end's far too stiff for you as well. So I'm going to make the bike soften up a bit so it absorbs bumps. So you don't have to hold on to it. Yeah, front end bounces. So another part of the reason why you went down in 14 is the front end won't be calm and still. It's always doing this. So if it does that, goes into a downstroke, it unweights the rear tire. So in turn two, you're probably going around turn two doing this all the time. So we got to get rid of that. These forks need to start at 26 clicks in. There's 50 maximum but you really shouldn't go past 45. So I'm gonna start at 30 because the oil is obviously old from 06. See the difference now? It just goes and it's ready for the next bump. So now your whole bike needs to be even. That's a little slow in the back. Go the other side where Chris is and go ahead watch the bike. See it responds evenly. So you everything you know about this bike you got to throw out of your head. 
So you need to back off 10% on your first session out, relearn the bike and recalibrate your head, ride at 80% for the session and pick it up a little bit, but no more than 85. And the following session, go ahead, pick the pace up. Because everything you know about this bike just went out the window. And there, you've got a front tire to scrub in and et cetera, et cetera. Even though you'll think you're paying attention, half of your brain is going, uh, what happened? So we have to make sure you're aware of that. Okay. Better? Much better. Okay. Um, I'm much more comfortable, although I didn't push it very hard. Well, no. There's, there's no rush to crash, right? <laughs> so the first session out, when it's so different, like I said, 80% and just find your way around again. Um, feel more planted, more stuck right. to the ground. Yeah. So that the, the essence of that is if you feel more comfortable, you let the bike do a lot more of the work which is what it's designed to do, and you just relax on looking ahead, where am I braking, turning, who's coming up? So you're playing the mental game of riding the bike. The bike almost becomes incidental. So, tire wear on the back is great. That's cleaning up nicely from the previous time it was ridden. As you can tell, on the front, I didn't really lean too much. No. At this point, you know? No, and that's what the rest of the day's for. Right. There's no rush, like I said, I to check it. didn't happen like what I did you know, last time here. Sure. You know? <laughs> Now that you've got a good feel for the bike, make sure that you're accelerating hard on when you're straight up and down and that you're braking appropriately straight up and down so you get a good feel for the way the bike handles getting on the gas and braking. And then bring it back so I can see how much travel you're using in the front. Okay. For brakes, it's really important that you use the same marker. So find a big patch on the track or where the road comes into the track before the bridge and just brake there all the time. If you find you're braking way too early, adjust. You know, make those mental adjustments and start picking up reference points for braking only. Okay, okay? and then we'll see what it's like after the next session. Okay. Travel-wise, you're using two-thirds to three-quarters, so you're nowhere near bottom, nowhere. So I can have you go ahead and brake appropriately. Okay. All right? Sounds good. See you on the next session. Yes. Thank you. Excellent.